Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's 12 o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a Q&A. This is where I take all of your questions that you've asked over the course of the week, and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. Now, one question comes up over and over and over again on this channel, which is about Rubik's Cube magic. Every single week, every single day, I get people saying, when are you gonna do a video on the Rubik's Cubes? When are you gonna do a video on the Rubik's Cubes? And I think one of the reasons for that is because Rubik's Cube Magic has become a lot more popular. Uh, obviously, as we all know, Takamiz Asui uh, was basically the godfather of Rubik's Cube Magic, but then it's been popularized recently um, by Cube 3 with, uh, with uh, Stephen Brunridge, Henry Harrius, uh, and all of his wonderful gimmicks, and a whole bunch of other people. And a lot of magicians are wanting to get into Rubik's Cube magic. It has now come its own genre. I remember when uh, Daryl uh, first brought out the Enchanted Cube, which was really the first Rubik's Cube trick on the market before anything with regular cubes came about. And that was the only thing. And it was just kind of like, OK, but this is a really cool trick. And it was a gimmick cube that allowed you to, you know, solve it as you throw it in the air and it couldn't be examined. Um, and that was like a big deal. Everybody was doing that. And that was like a huge thing. And obviously recently Murphys have re-released the Enchanted Cube. Um, but since then, Rubik's Cube magic really has become its own genre. And magicians who initially were like, oh, I don't think I want to do Rubik's Cube magic. I don't like it, have started doing it um, and started doing a lot of Rubik's Cube magic. And there's a lot of people that are leading the way and there's new things coming out all the time. And I think that's one of the reasons that people ask me to do a video like this. So th this Q&A is all going to be, it's going to be about the Rubik's Cube. Uh, and it's going to be kind of like a hows and whys of the Rubik's Cube. I'm going to talk to you about Rubik's Cube magic. I'm going to talk to you about what Rubik's Cube magic is, why you should do Rubik's Cube magic, the best way to get into it. I'm going to try and answer everyone's questions. Now, if you've already got... Uh, some abilities with Rubik's Cube. If you already do some Rubik's Cube stuff in your act, that's brilliant. There's still going to be a lot of material in here that you're going to be interested in. If you've never done a Rubik's Cube before and you've never done any magic with a Rubik's Cube, then, you know, in all honesty with you, I think this is a video that you absolutely have to watch. Any questions that were asked last week, I'm going to move on to the following week where we'll have a normal Q&A. And if you've got any particular questions about Rubik's Cubes or anything else, ask them in this video and I'll get to those next week as well. But without further ado, let's get into the hows and whys of Rubik's Cubes. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is why bother doing Rubik's Cube magic. Why bother? You know, and that, this is something I get from a lot of magicians. A lot of magicians go, oh, I'm not gonna do Rubik's Cube magic, it's not my style, or everyone does Rubik's Cube magic, so why should I do it? Which I've never understood, because everyone does card magic, everyone does coin magic. Are you saying you're never gonna do any genre of magic that another magician does? So, uh, you know, I suppose the first question is, should you learn to uh, perform Rubik's Cube magic? And I suppose there's a couple of things that you need to ask yourself about this. And the first question is, does it fit your act or your character or can you make it fit your act or your character? Um, as long as you can make it fit your act or you can make it fit your performing character, I would say absolutely put Rubik's Cube magic into your act. And I'll tell you for why. There's a few advantages with the Rubik's Cube. Now, the first advantage is Rubik's Cube magic is super visual. It really is like you solve a Rubik's Cube, you mix up a Rubik's Cube and you solve it. People can see that from a really long distance away, um, which makes it which makes it one of those few props where you can perform it in literally any environment. So this will work on stage while it will also work close up. Like my friend Nemid Phoenix, he opens his cabaret show with a Rubik's Cube routine. He opens it up with Rubik's, um, Rubik's Dream, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But as well as doing Rubik's Cube magic in his cabaret show, he also does Rubik's Cube magic walk around. And that's the thing, I do that. I, I have a Rubik's Cube routine that I do on stage. I've done it as a front of cloth piece in my illusion show to like literally five, six, seven hundred people. But I've also done it mix and mingle. I will frequently have a cube, put it in my pocket, keep it in there, and I can take the cube out while I'm doing mix and mingle, do the trick and then put it away. It doesn't take up much space just by putting that in my pocket. And if you think about it, how many routines or how many tricks do you know that will work to a massive audience, but they'll also work 
close-up mix and mingle. There aren't that many. There's no angle issues to, to speak of with this. Uh, it's not, Rubik's Cube magic is not that hard to do. A lot of people think it's very difficult because the cube is perceived as being hard to solve. But in actual fact, Rubik's Cube magic is not difficult at all once you understand the basic uh, the, the basics of it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The other thing is this transcends age. And what I mean by that is because this thing came out in the 80s, any adults will know exactly what this is immediately. Uh, it doesn't come across as a child's toy. They'll know what it is and they'll probably know how difficult it is to solve. Um, it, it becomes an object that they're familiar with. But likewise, a lot of kids know what Rubik's Cubes are. These are sold in toy shops. So you can you can you can do this in a kids show, and I have done it in a kids show. But you can also do it, um, you know, in a corporate event to to adults, and that's absolutely fine as well. It, it transcends the age range. It's something that will work for absolutely everybody. And there's a lot you can do with a Rubik's cube. Now, here's one of the reasons that I hear people saying, "Oh, I don't do Rubik's cube magic because oh, no, all you can do is solve a cube." Well, saying all you can do with solve a cube with Rubik's cube magic is like saying all you can do with coin magic is vanish a coin. Yeah, it's true you can vanish a coin, but there's a lot more you can do with coin magic. It's the same with this. The two things that come to mind are obviously solving the cube and um, doing cube matching routines. Uh, but there's a lot more you can do with it as well. And a lot of the time, the magic will happen in the spectator's hands. Look at Michael Murray's wonderful routine, which we'll discuss later on, um, where the cube gets mixed by the spectator behind their back and, uh, and solved while the spectator's holding it behind your back. Carl Hein in Cube Effects has got some great ideas with a cube where it's held in the spectator's hand and it solves. There's some wonderful stuff you can do with a Rubik's Cube. There really is. Um, it's not just about solving the cube and matching the cube. You also don't need gimmicks with a Rubik's Cube. Yes, there are some wonderful gimmicks. Henry Harrius has basically dominated the market when it comes to Rubik's Cubes and gimmicks. But there's a lot of stuff that you can do um, without gimmicks. Look at um, Kev G in the Refractor Project and all the stuff that he's putting in there. Um, look at all the stuff that went out with, uh, you know, when uh, uh, Takamir's Asui originally put together um, his original DVD on the Rubik's Cube, which is kind of what kick-started all of this stuff. Um, but when he did that, um, you know, that was all with a regular cube. Um, so, so you don't need gimmicks if you don't want to. It's not that expensive. If you want to get into Rubik's Cube magic, it's not like constantly needing to buy new packs of cards and special packs of cards. You can get yourself one decent speed cube and that's all you need to perform a lot of routines. So there's a lot of big advantages to actually being able to do Rubik's Cube magic. There really are. And, and for me, it's the visual aspect of it. It's, it's something that will play without me saying very much. It'll happen in the spectator's hands. There's no angle restrictions. It's an almost instant reset, depending on the routine I'm doing. It'll be reset instantly. And the audience are aware of how difficult it is to solve one of these things. This is, this is the thing with the Rubik's Cube. Everybody has probably tried in the past to solve Rubik's Cube and fail. They know how hard it is. So there's your advantages of, of Rubik's Cube magic. I'm not here to try and convince you to do Rubik's Cube magic. I just want to kind of put across the reasons I love doing magic with cubes, and I really do. So with that in mind, let's have a talk now about whether or not you need to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube if you're going to do cube magic. So do you need to solve a Rubik's Cube in order to do cube magic? Because I see a lot of projects these days that come out and it's kind of like, hey, the big selling point is you don't need to solve a Rubik's Cube. You can do this trick without solving a Rubik's Cube. No skill required. You can do this trick without solving a Rubik's Cube. And, and in essence, a lot of it's true. But a lot of the routines that you'll learn with a Rubik's Cube, you, in order to practice them, you have to mix up the cube. And you're probably going to have to do a series of specific mixes and then take those mixes out during the course of the routine. I remember when I first got um, Enchanted Cube by Daryl, which kind of kick-started the whole cube thing. Uh, when I got uh, Enchanted Cube by Daryl way back before I did Cube Magic, um, within about an hour of practicing, I completely messed up the cube. And it was, it was almost useless to me. I couldn't do anything else with it because I couldn't mix it up. I got, it was all mixed up for real. Um, and that wouldn't have been an issue if I knew how to solve Rubik's Cube. My, um, the reason I learned to solve Rubik's Cube was because the first proper Rubik's Cube trick that I got that I wanted to put into my act was Rubicon by Greg Wilson. 
Uh, I bought Rubicon by Greg Wilson, loved the performance that he put on there and I, I could see myself doing it. It was very much my style. And it was a great instruction. And Greg went into the fact that he doesn't solve Ruby's Cube. And, uh, and I was practicing the moves that I had to do in order to do this trick. And I somehow messed it up and I mixed up the Rubik's Cube. And I'm like, damn, I've got this gimmicked cube now and I'm going to have to solve it. What am I going to do? So I bought myself Cube 3 by Stephen Brundridge because everybody recommended that as the, the kind of project that you need to watch in order to solve the Rubik's Cube. And uh, I taught myself how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And uh, in order to solve the cube, in order to do Rubicon. But then what happened is I kind of got, a, during the course of learning Rubik's Cubes, I kind of got obsessed with it. And that's when I then started learning the rest of the material on Cube 3 and a whole bunch of other cube stuff as well. But initially, um, I, I only learned to solve Rubik's Cube to fix my Rubicon cube so I can practice it some more. Uh, and I think that's the problem. That's the problem. You don't have to solve a Rubik's Cube. But if anything goes wrong with the cube that you're using, then you, you're in trouble. So, for example, let's say, and it doesn't even have to be a mistake you make while practicing. It could be that you're at a gig and someone takes the cube off you and mixes it up. Well, then you're in trouble. You can't do your trick again unless you learn how to solve that cube. Uh, if you can solve a cube, you'll be able to fix that very, very quickly before you go to the next table. So I think solving a cube is really, really important. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is how to solve a Rubik's Cube. So I'm going to mix this cube up and we're going to talk about how to solve Rubik's Cube. Now, this is not a video where I'm going to explain to you how to solve Rubik's Cube and go through the algorithms. That is not something that I'm going to do. Um, there you go, mix it up. That's not something that I'm going to do. However, I'll just quickly go through the process behind it. Um, now, when I first learned to solve Rubik's Cube, I learned with... Um, uh, uh, cube three, like I said, uh, on cube three, there's kind of two sections to it. The first section is how to, all the tricks that you can do with the Rubik's Cube. And the second section is how to solve Rubik's Cube. Uh, and it comes with a really nice speed cube as well, by the way. So if you're, if you're wanting to get into cube magic, cube three is a great place to start. I'm not going to get into the controversy here. I'm not going to get into the controversy. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about cube three really not being different enough to the godfather of cube magic, which is Takamiz Asui. His DVD is required viewing, in my opinion, if you want to be a cuber. I don't use the Takamiz mix. And the reason I don't is because I learned from Brundwich and I didn't know about Takamiz until I'd started doing cube magic. And at that point, it was embedded into my brain, so I couldn't switch. But, um, you know, Stephen has gone on record as saying that Takamiz... Uh, his, you know, he's gone on say, record as saying he shouldn't have uh, taught his mix on Cube 3 or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. I've tried to keep away from the controversy. All I'm saying is I learned how to solve a cube uh, from Cube 3. So I'd recommend getting through Cube 3, but I'd absolutely also recommend getting Takamiz's DVD as well. But let's just talk about solving a Rubik's Cube. So I, I'm not going to teach it you now. If you don't want to get Cube 3, there's lots of uh, YouTube channels that you can learn how to solve a cube. There's the beginner method and then there's the more advanced method. Um, you only need the beginner method. Um, what you will find is when you start solving cubes, you're going to become obsessed with it and you're going to be improving your solve time and improving your solve time. Um, in order to solve a Rubik's Cube with the beginner method, generally you want to make sure that the white is at the bottom and you have to make a white cross. Now, this is not as difficult as it sounds. And as I say, this is not a tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. But what you have to do, uh, the first thing that you do is you have to make a white cross, which looks something like that. So you've got a white cross on the bottom and you'll notice that the sides line up. So this green center here is next to this piece, which is green and white, saying orange, orange, blue, blue, red, red. Because it's important to know the sides of the cube, like white is opposite to yellow, green is opposite to blue, and orange is opposite to red. When you've got your, um, uh, your white cross, what you then do is you fill in these pieces down here. So you fill in the corner pieces, and there's two or three different algorithms that you can use to fill in the corner pieces. Then when you've filled in the corner pieces, you then fill in these center pieces here, and that will get you the two layers. And we'll talk about the top layer in a minute. Now, in all honesty, I don't use the beginner method anymore. I learned the beginner method, and I now use something called uh, F2L, which is uh, just a little bit uh, more intuitive. It's a little bit quicker. And basically, the difference between the beginner method and F2L is with the beginner method, 
Uh, it, it takes a while, basically. Uh, there we go. The beginner method takes a while. F to L, you're doing the two, you're doing the bottom two layers at the same time, if that kind of makes sense. So uh, and I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. It's weird. Um, so I'm now doing F to L and I'm fixing the bottom two layers at the same time. So here we go. We're almost done. There we go. So if you look at this, you can see that the bottom two layers are done. So I've got completely done the white and I've completely done the bottom two layers. Now, the beginner method, you do one layer at a time. With F2L, you do, the, uh, you do the two layers at the same time. Then you get to the top layer. Now, I still use the beginner method for the top layer. Ryland, if he was here with me, he would talk to you about OOL and PLL. I don't want to go too much into this, uh, but Ryland, when he solves a cube, he uses what, uh, orientating last layer and permutate, per, permutating last layer. And basically, he can look at this layer and he can do one sequence, one algorithm. There's like eight or nine or algorithms he needs to, he, he knows, he looks at it, and he knows what algorithm he needs to use in order to completely cover the yellow layer. And then he knows what algorithm he needs to use to fix the sides of the top layer. And he can do the top layer in like 10 seconds or something, quicker than that. Um, I, however, can't do that, so I have to use uh, the old school method, and I'll talk about why I don't do that in a second. Uh, but basically, first of all, you have to make a yellow cross, which I've just done. Uh, when you make a yellow cross, you have to do a series of uh, simple algorithms. There you go, which gets me into the same position Ryland would be in. But obviously, the outside of it is wrong, so now I have to do another couple of algorithms and that will get me into a situation where I've solved a cube. So um, that is how to solve a cube. It's not actually that difficult. There's probably about 10 or 12 algorithms that you need to learn. And if you spend a good couple of days practicing this, and as I say, the nice thing about these cubes is you can carry it around with you and you're good to go. Now, Ryland is obsessed with getting a faster solve time. Um, that's kind of a thing that he's obsessed with. He's always wanting to reduce his solve time. For me, I'm more than happy to... I, I can, and my PB with a Rubik's Cube is about 28 seconds, which I'm more than happy with. For me, I'm not obsessed with trying to get a quicker solve time and a quicker solve time. That's not my thing. I just want to be able to do it fast enough that I can impress somebody at a gig. Because forget about all the magic that we're going to be talking about coming up. One of the one of the coolest things you can do with a Rubik's Cube, if you see a kid, for example, playing with a Rubik's Cube at a gig, let's say you work restaurants and there's a kid there with a Rubik's Cube, picking it up and solving it for them and putting it down, there's nothing more magical that you can do. Like, seriously, it's just like almost like, oh my gosh, that guy's a superhero, right? Um, and I want to be able to mix, have a cube mixed up and solved relatively quickly. Um, so I can solve, I always solve Rubik's Cube less than 60 seconds. That's fast enough to me. If I'm at a gig and I have the cube mixed up for real, and you do get that, you do get people, when you're doing Rubik's Cube magic, you'll have people go, give me the cube, let me mix it up. And you, you get them to mix it up, and then you... Um, you get them to uh, you get them to mix it up, and then uh, and then you solve it in front of them. If you can solve that in 30, 40 seconds, that's incredible to them. That's it. End of. Stop right there. Um, but for me, the main reason I want to be able to solve the Rubik's cube is so that if I'm practicing and I make a mistake, I can reset the cube. Uh, if somebody mixes up the cube at a gig, I can fix it. Um, it's really important. It's so frustrating if you can't solve a Rubik's cube. Ryland, he, like I say, he's obsessed with Rubik's cubes. He wants to get a faster solve time, faster solve time. So he's always learning more algorithms. And that's the thing. When you become speed cubing, when you get into speed cubing, uh, you have to learn lots and lots of different algorithms. And then, you know, Ryland's got four by fours and five by fives and ten by tens and five by threes and stuff. And it gets ridiculous. Uh, but for me, you, you know, you can learn a Rubik's Cube and just you can learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube in just a couple of days. So I advise you, very, very, very highly advise you to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. OK, so now we've solved the Rubik's Cube, we've learned how to solve Rubik's Cube. What's the type of magic you can do? Well, we can talk about gimmicks in a minute, and I will talk about gimmicks in a minute. But first of all, let's talk about uh, the different mixes. As I say, the whole concept behind Rubik's Cubes uh, was, was pioneered by Takemiz Usui. And his Penguin Live lecture is amazing, by the way. You should check out his Penguin Live lecture. And, and it's the concept of, and as I say, I actually use Brundwidge's mix. There's very little difference between the two. Um, but it's the whole concept of 
apparently mixing up the cube like this, right? So you, you've apparently uh, mixed up the cube and it's mixed up, but you're, you're really close to solving it. It doesn't look like it, but you are really close to solving it. So what you can do is with a shake, you can take out the four moves that you need and solve the cube. That's the basics behind a lot of Rubik's Cube magic. The ability to apparently mix up a cube and then solve it. Um, and uh, Ryland will tell you that there's so many different full shuffles that you can do with the Rubik's Cube. It's a bit like a, a pack of cards, to be honest. You know, you, with a pack of cards, you can learn full shuffles and stuff. Well, there's lots of different false mixes that you can learn with the Rubik's Cube. There's the uh, this thing called the sexy move. And if you do it a certain amount of times, it'll... Uh, um, you know, it'll go back to the original order and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's the, it's the idea of apparently mixing up the cube. And as you're talking to people, uh, you're just mixing this cube up and, you know, you talk about how the, the more it's mixed, the harder it is to solve. Uh, there's 47 <laughs> quintillion combinations with the Rubik's Cube, blah, 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 blah. And then you stop and you're, you're very close to having it solved. So at that point, there's so many different ways that you can solve a Rubik's Cube at this point. So you can do this sort of thing where you come up and you can do like a really sort of quick visual solve. Um, you can do it behind your back. Uh, Stephen Brunwich pio uh, pioneered the whole idea of taking a cube and holding it behind your back and throwing it over your back. And when I do that, I always miss it. Um, so I throw it from underneath my legs. Or you can literally just put the cube behind your back and solve it. And the four moves that you'd need to take out in order to do that, um, you can just do behind your back. Um, and all the different solves with a regular cube are variations on that. So, for example, a cube solve that's very, very popular is one that came as a bonus routine on, I think it was Rubik's 360 by Henry Harrius. I think it was Rubik's 360. It might have been InstaCube, but it's this one, which is very, very popular, where you say, look, I'm going to solve the cube with one move. To be clear, this is a move. Every time you spin the cube, that's a move. One move looks like this. I'll solve the cube in one move. That's one move. Any questions? That's just a variation on the theme. So that's just a completely different mix that gets you into a completely different situation, which then um, means that you can solve it in a different way. Rather than doing a shake, you're solving it with one move. And all that's happening is the, you know the moves that need to be taken out and you're taking them out very quickly. So this thing here, and when I do one move, it's basically the same thing. It's just about knowing the different moves that you need to take out. It's a bit like, uh, you know, uh, Henry Harrius was the first person to do, um, I think he was, I might be wrong, but Henry Harrius was one of the first people to do a solve where the cube is thrown up in the air. And that was on the original Rubik's Dream. And uh, I think it was on Rubik's Nightmare before that. But it was definitely on Rubik's Dream. Uh, and then Brunwich uh, came up with his version in his project. I use the Brunwich version, which is where you show that the thing is completely mixed. And then you have it in here and you, you throw it up and it solves. That's another thing. And that's another example of mixing up a cube, apparently. You're close to having it solved. It looks like it's not close. And you're just taking those moves out as, in this case, you throw it up in the air. He's got that wonderful rotation solve, which looks like the cube is solving in slow motion as you're rotating it behind your hand. And one that I really like doing is um, one where you have... Um, you have someone, this is again, is a Stephen Brunwich idea, where you have somebody name a colour. So let's say they say green and you mix it up again and uh, you mix it up and whatever you do. And then you say green. OK, you want green. No problem. This is the green side. Now, when uh, when uh, Stephen did this, he put his hand in front of it. I like to shake it like this. So you shake it and you say, look, slowly the uh, the green side will solve. And as the green side solves, look at this. Every other side of the cube solves as well, which is a nice version of it. Uh, that's a Stephen Brundwich idea. But, but the point I'm trying to make here is every single one of these solves, um, they're all variations on a the theme. They're all variations on um, having the cube mixed up. It's closer to being solved than the audience is aware of. Uh, because the, the thing with Rubik's Cubes, there's a, there's a, num there's a thing called God's Number. Uh, which is 20. Look it up, Google it. It's an actual thing, which basically says that a Rubik's Cube is only 20 moves away from being solved. Now, the reason that most people can't solve it in 20 moves is because you'd need to know literally thousands of algorithms in order to be able to do that. But um, a Rubik's Cube really benefits from the fact that when it's only been, it's only had, 
if it's four moves away from being solved or sometimes even three moves away from being solved, it looks crazy mixed up. You wouldn't be able to tell it was close to being solved. So as long as you know what you need, which moves you need to do to um, to uh, straighten the cube out, you can do that very, very quickly under misdirection. And, and that's why Rubik's Cube magic isn't that difficult. A lot of people think it's really hard, but it's not. It's about remembering, in the case of the classic mix, Taka, uh, Taka's mix or um, uh, Brundwidge's mix, you know, that, that you're, you're remembering four moves. You're remembering a sequence of four moves and that's it, right? So then you're in this situation and you're four moves away. This looks completely and totally mixed. Now, uh, it really does. But because I know the four moves, I can just do that and I can apparently just solve it. So it's not as difficult as it seems. Um, as I say, Ryland can do it brilliantly and he's eight and he could do it when he was six. Um, so there's no excuse for anyone that's watching this. Now, um, so yeah, I'd absolutely recommend Cube 3. Uh, I'd absolutely recommend Takamiz's um, uh, project as well. I'd recommend his Penguin Live as well, actually. I'd also recommend uh, Cube Effects by Carl Hine. He's got some wonderful ideas on there as well, and I'm not going to go into all of them now, but he's got some fantastic ideas. One idea that he's got, which is absolutely brilliant, is the concept of... Uh, having a cube legitimately mixed up. So the spectator mixes the cube up. And this is something I like doing when... Um, uh, this is something I like doing when uh, th they actually take the cube off me and mix it. Uh, so they've they've mixed up the cube. And then you say to them, okay, 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 you've mixed up this cube, you've done a great job. Let me see if I can do something. Uh, name a colour. And let's say they say, uh, they say white. You go, okay, white, no problem. Let me see if I can do this. Check this out. Look, I, I think I can do this. Let me... Uh, let me do this. And you say, well, the, the problem is the more you mix this cube up, the harder it is to solve. Uh, but I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to give it one more mix. Now, obviously, this is all mixed up. Uh, and as you can see, it really is mixed up. Hold your hand out for me. And they hold their hand out and you put this in their hand and you tell them to cover it up with their hand, which they do. And you say, look, I'm going to try and solve this in your hand. And, um, and they go, no, that's impossible. And when they lift up the hand, it hasn't solved. And you say, well, what color did you think of? White. And you go, white, okay, no problem. Let's have a look. Do you see any white there? Nope. Do you see any white there? Nope. Do you see any white there? Do you see any white there? Do you see any white there? No. And the reason is only one side and one side only was solved. And that is uh, the color white. There you go. Uh, which is another nice thing that you can do. Now, the disadvantage with this is it ends up with the cube um, legitimately uh mixed and you have to solve it which isn't a problem if you'd learn to solve the cube it's totally not an issue at all but that's a really nice thing on cube three carl's got a few other ideas as well which is really good where you take the cube and uh, you get them to take a picture they hold the cube like this and you get them to take a pic you take a picture with their phone of the cube and they're holding onto the cube and then you're you're going into solving the cube and when you've solved the cube, they uh, the picture is solved on their on their phone as well. I mean, there's some really clever stuff on cube effects. That's what well worth looking at. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's that's an overview of the basic concepts behind a Rubik's cube. Uh, the one other thing that we should talk about is cube matching effects. Uh, oh, and and the uh, Michael Murray thing that I talked about earlier on. So Michael Murray has um, a version of a cube routine where the spectator solves the, uh, the the cube behind their back and it's absolutely incredible. It's typical, very clever Michael Murray thinking mixed with some dual reality and, and it is just a regular cube and that's what's beautiful about it. Um, and it's it's an amazing, an amazing routine. I perform it all of the time. I've talked about it on various different videos on this channel in the past, to be perfectly honest. It's well worth, uh, it's well worth checking out. So the behind the back solve. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Very quickly, I'm going to play you a video. This is a video that is me performing at a 60th birthday party um, a couple of weeks ago. And it's me doing a cube routine to the person whose birthday it is. Um, and I, I, I'm doing it as sort of a uh, an end piece for everybody. A lot of the time when I do a close-up job, I'll do an end piece to everyone. I'll gather everyone around and do something for everybody. And a lot of the time it'll be a cube routine because it's just something I can carry around with me and I can do to a big group of people. And in this routine, I do a few different things with the Rubik's Cube. So I... Uh, I start off by doing a simple um, solve. Then I do a, um, a cube matching routine with my tattoo, which you'll see in a minute. Then I do another solve, I believe. 
uh, and then I do Q, uh, I do the spectator behind the back thing, which is Michael Murray's, and then I finish off with Cuban Bottle. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that I do here. We'll talk about Cuban Bottle later on, but I think it'd be worthwhile you looking at this performance. Notice I've got people literally all around me, and it makes absolutely no difference. The beautiful thing about Cube Magic is there are no angles. So let me just perform this for you right now, and just show you this uh, sequence, and then I'll um, I'll I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, other aspects of cubes and we'll get into gimmick cubes as well and gimmicks that you can use with a Rubik's Cube. I have a bag. Now guys, I promise you this is the trick you're gonna remember forever. I want you to watch very carefully. There's a few things inside this bag. The first thing that's inside there is a glass bottle. We're gonna get back to that in a bit. I'm just gonna put that over there, right next to the uh, frazzlers. There we go. <laughs> the other thing that I have in here, I have two things. I have the same thing, but I have two of them. Inside here, I have something that I'm willing to bet most people have owned one of these before, or you even have one now. Inside this bag, I have two Rubik's Cubes. Anybody got a Rubik's Cube owned one at one point yeah, in your life? Yeah. I have one. Fantastic. Well, I've got... Anybody here know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? <laughs> Caitlin can. I did it once. <laughs> Without <laughs> taking the stickers time. off? I didn't take the stickers wow, off. Wow, <laughs> congratulations, Caitlin. Well, I've got two Rubik's Cubes in here. I've been solving Rubik's Cubes for a long time, for about 20 years. Um, and at home, I've got a collection of over 200 Rubik's Cubes. There's a technical term for that. It's called SAD. <laughs> um, the, two cubes. Uh, this is the first one. This is the oldest cube I own. My mom and dad got me this cube. This is about 15 years old, something like this. This has not been solved in a very, very long time. Now, everybody here who said they couldn't solve Rubik's Cubes, every single person here could solve the other cube in this bag. And the reason is the other one is brand new. It's not yet being mixed up. <laughs> I just give it you and you'd say, done. So we're gonna do something and you get, you get to make all the decisions. Okay. Two cubes, a really old one that's not been sold in a long time and a brand new one that's yet to be mixed up. Which one should we do the magic with? The brand new one. The brand new one, okay. So we're gonna take the old one out. Hold your hand out like that. I'm just gonna put that there. We're gonna leave the, we're gonna leave the, uh, the brand new one inside the bag. I'm gonna put it right there and you don't let anyone near that bag. If anybody comes close and tries to open it, hit them with your stick. <laughs> so, this is a Rubik's Cube. Guys, there are 47 quintillion million combinations with a Rubik's Cube. The more you mix it up, the harder it is to solve. The world champion solves one of these in about six seconds with two hands. I'm gonna try and go one step further. I'm gonna try and solve this in one second with one hand. Now think about this, if I could solve this cube in one second with one hand, would that be good enough to get a big round of applause? Yeah. 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 You're going to say go. When you say go, I'm going to solve it in a second. Watch the cube. Anytime you want to, say go. 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 That's a second, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Oh, I had ripples of a, uh, a gold wow. Now there's a rule in magic, never repeat a trick. Mainly because the first time it's entertainment, the second time it's educational. Um, but I'm going to do it again. Now, like I said, the more you mix up a cube, the harder it is to solve. Um, like I said, there's 47 quintillion million combinations. Do me a favor, anytime you want to, just say stop. Stop. There. You want to do one more turn? Yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one more, or are you good? Good. You're good, great. Hold your hand out for me again. I'm gonna put that right there. 47 quintillion million combinations, that is one combination of the 47 quintillion million. It's impossible to know ahead of time what, a, what, what position that cube would be in. Mm -hmm. But if I told you I knew exactly what that cube would look like, would you believe me? No. Because the trick I did before this one, I predicted five cards that were picked with this tattoo. The thing you need to understand is I've got two arms. Oh my God. And there's a tattoo of a Rubik's cube on this side. Oh. And if I just oh, take what? this one, oh. one, red, blue, yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, orange, green, red, white, green, peace. No, Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the thing is, the reason these guys haven't gone crazy is they want me to solve the cube again. Are you ready? One second. Caitlin, when you say go. Go. That's still a second, right? <laughs> You know what? I'll tell you how this works. I can't really tell you how it works, but I'm kind of going to give you a rough idea. Um, name a colour for me. Blue. But are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. If you, I'm going to do it one more time, but just with the colour blue, okay? <coughs> now, here's the thing. When you uh, are trying to solve Rubik's Cube, and Caitlin will tell you this, as she sold one once, you have to understand that the centre points of a Rubik's Cube never move. So, in other words, if you want to solve the red side, it has to be there where the red centre is. That cannot be the red side, that would have to be the green side, so the blue side would have to be there. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Do you see the blue side? Yeah. Right there. Now you'll see there's nine squares. The only one that's blue is, is, is the middle one. But in order for the blue side to be sold, all these would have to be blue. <coughs> Watch. Slow motion, one hand. I go from one blue square to two blue squares. I go from two blue squares to four blue squares. I go from four blue squares to six blue squares. And one last shake, I get nine blue squares, which is good until I snap my fingers and then every single color on the cube goes in red. <laughs> The only way I could improve this is if I got somebody who didn't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube to solve a Rubik's Cube, somebody like you. <laughs> the nice thing about this is if you get it wrong, it's not me that's got the trick wrong, it's you. So, can you stand right there? Very good. Just face the front, smile, you're in show business right now. Look. I'm going to put this cube behind my back, in a second I'm going to put it behind your back. Can you see the cube? Yeah. When it goes behind your back, all I want you to do is turn it like this. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. That's exactly what I want you to do. Okay. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Now it's already mixed up, she can only make it worse. Put the hand behind the back, very good. Do me a favour, start turning it just like I showed you. And any time you want to stop turning it, stop but keep it behind your back. <coughs> like I said, take your time because you get paid by the hour. You know. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Yeah. Now here's the thing. I can solve a cube. Everything that you've seen me do, you expect me to do because I'm a magician. But if you solve the cube behind your back, they're going to go crazy. But this is only going to work if you believe. Do you believe? I believe. Do you believe? I really believe. You really believe. I'm going to count backwards. I'm going to go three, two, one. I'm going to snap my fingers. You're going to bring the cube out. And okay. if it's solved, they're going to go crazy. Three, two, one. No. Oh, my gosh. But hang on. I promised you a magical souvenir, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember we left a cube in that bag over yeah. there? And you've no one's gone near it? No. You haven't had to? No. Hit somebody. No. Okay. I'm going to give you a souvenir that you're going to keep forever. What you're about to have, you can't buy this. If you were the richest person in the world, you wouldn't be able to get yourself one of these. The only way you can get one of these is by coming to my show. It uses that, that cube that we left in there, the brand new one. That's the one you chose yeah. to leave it there. And it also uses this bottle that's been by the Frazzlers mm -hmm. the whole time. I'm going to put the bottle in the bag with the cube. Now, has anybody ever seen a magician? He's not very well known. You probably haven't heard of him. He's a guy called Dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard, heard of him. TV. I've never heard of him. So here's the thing. Did anyone see Dynamo put a phone in a bottle? Yeah. yeah. That is a stupid trick. Because it's amazing, but the only way to get that phone out is to smash the bottle. And you're going to want your phone, so you're going to have to smash the bottle. So you've got no evidence. You've got no proof that this magical thing happened to you. So I'm going to try and give you some evidence that what you've seen today has happened, and this is something that you can keep forever. I want you to watch. Can you come over here for a minute? No. The bottle, get it inside the bottle and the cube inside the bag. Hold on to the top for me with both hands. Very good. I want you guys to watch very carefully. It's going to happen on three. One, two, three. No way. No. Is it no. Well, if it is, that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and if it is, that would be a magical souvenir that you can't buy in the shop. You can't get these anywhere. You can only get them if you see my show. And if I did put that cube in the bottle, it would look something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a genuine cube inside a bottle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You can keep that as a souvenir. That's my birthday present to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. For watching, let's give her a big cue. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's an example of a few cube moves that you can actually do with a uh, with a cube. I mean, that's that's me structuring a few different things together into an act. A couple of things to talk about. First of all, the uh, the Michael Murray routine. You can see that in there. That's absolutely brilliant. You can get that directly from him. Uh, if you've learned the stuff that I, if you've learned anything like Cube Three or Takamiz Sui's. Uh, wonderful cube routine then you'll be able to do that no problem there's uh, you'll have all the technical ability you'll need to be able to do that the solve that I used the, not the solve but the um, the match that I used when I uh, I did it with the tattoo uh, that's basically my I, I, I call this my timing force and it's basically uh, me using the um, timing force with the deck of cards so if you know the timing force with the deck of cards where you cut small packets and they say stop and you know it's time so they always stop at uh, uh, the the card it's the same thing with the cube um so you just mix up this cube and the whole idea is 
that you have the spectator say stop anytime they want to. And wherever they say stop, you time it so that when you stop talking, they're always going to stop in the situation where it matches the tattoo. And uh, that's one of my favorite, uh, that's one of my favorite ways to do a cube matching effect because I only need a regular cube with me and I've always got the tattoo on me. Now, nobody else is gonna carry a tattoo around with them, I imagine. You're not gonna be stupid enough to get a tattoo of a Rubik's Cube on your arm, but you can get a picture of a Rubik's Cube or you can put another Rubik's Cube in a bag or give somebody else another Rubik's Cube or you can have two cubes and do a false mix with one. You can use the same thing. Um, and then obviously you're only four moves away from solving it. So that's the, uh, that's the matchup. But let's talk about cube matches because that's kind of one of the most popular concepts of the Rubik's Cube. Having two people mix up a cube or you mixing up a cube and it's solving. Now, how does that work? Well, there's a few different ways of doing it. Uh, the first way, as I say, is, uh, is the timing force. Um, but there's so many other ways that you can do this as well. Um, and a lot of them require gimmicks. Now, the first gimmick that was used to achieve this sort of effect was Rubicon, uh, which is still, you know, a lot of people uh, say, oh, Rubicon's outdated now because of the stuff that Henry's brought out. Yes, the stuff that Henry's brought out is amazing, but Rubicon still has a place, absolutely still has a place. Greg Wilson uses Rubicon in his act almost every time he performs, which says something. It's still an incredible trick. It really is. And, and what happens with Rubicon is that you have two cubes. The spectator mixes one. You mix the other one. You mix them behind your back. And when you come out, the cubes have, so, uh, have matched on all, four, uh, all six sides, which looks absolutely amazing. The um, progressor to that uh, was um, uh, Rubik's Dream. So Rubik's Dream, you could do uh, that sort of thing. With Rubik's Dream, you had two cubes. Uh, you had a small cube, a mini cube, and you actually have a normal sized cube. And you were supplied with two, two shells, one that fits over the full size cube, one that fits over the small cube. Um, and a whole bunch of routines that you can do with this. But the nice thing about the small cube is it's perfect for table hopping because the small cube just fits in your pocket. It doesn't take up almost any pocket space. If you're wearing a waistcoat, it'll fit in the ticket pocket of your waistcoat. So why is that useful? Well, what you can do is you can have a cube that's apparently mixed and you can put that down on the table. Uh, or you can bring a cube out like this that's apparently mixed and give it a false mix. So you can say, I've got this Rubik's Cube here. I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to uh, I'm going to give it a really good mix. OK, we'll give it a really good mix. I'm going to put that right there. We'll get back to that in a minute. I've also got another cube in my pocket. You can take out the mini cube, show it very easily, palm off the shell and get somebody to mix up that mini cube. And as you take it back, the shell goes back on it. And you go, you mix this up and I mix this up beforehand. But I want you to see that each side matches perfectly absolutely every side and you can show that all six sides of the cube match and I actually used to use this for an awful time awful long time even in cabaret in fact I'll show you a quick I'll show you a quick video of me doing this in a cabaret stroke parlor type show uh let me show you this because uh it, 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 I don't do it in parlor anymore. I actually use a various different ways of doing it. I'll use Rubicon or, or Venom Cube, but I still use this small cube when I'm doing walk around an awful lot of the time. So let me quickly show you a video of that right now. I have there a bag, a red bag. Now inside this red bag, there is something I'm completely and totally obsessed with. No, it's not donuts. <laughs> inside this bag, I have two Rubik's Cubes. Now, does anybody own a Rubik's Cube back in the 70s when they were popular in the 80s and 70s? Do you remember the Rubik's Cube? You all remember the Rubik's Cube? Yeah, the Rubik's Cube. yeah the Rubik's Cube. it's still popular now. Now, I have um, two Rubik's Cubes in here. I should tell you, I've been solving Rubik's Cubes since the age of seven. I'm now 42, you can do the math. I've been solving them a long time. And at home, I have a collection of over 150 individual separate Rubik's Cubes. There's a technical term for that, it's called SAD. <laughs> no. uh, now both of these cubes mean something to me. This first cube here, this cube is very old. This cube is the very first cube that I was given. And this cube hasn't been solved in over a decade. By the way, does anybody know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? Without taking the stickers off, because that's cheating, you can't do that. <laughs> Nobody can solve the Rubik's Cube, but it doesn't matter because I guarantee you each and every one of you can solve this cube inside this bag. The other cube. It's brand new. It's not being mixed. It's very easy to solve. Now, before I do anything, as you helped me before, Sarah, I'm not going to ask you to stand up, but I do want you to make a decision. 
Two cubes in the bag, the really old one that's not been sold in a long time, the brand new one that's not been mixed. Which one should we do the magic with? Your choice. Which one? The old one. I'm going to take the new one out and leave the old one inside the bag. Your job is to pull onto this bag with the cube inside. Don't let anyone get to it. Okay? Please remember we leave that old mixed up cube inside the bag until later on. Can you hold on to that? I also need somebody to come up and help me. I need someone to come up and help. Everybody looks down as if to say, if I don't look as if you weren't thinking it. Uh, you did so well with the key thing. What's your name? Ali. Ali. Ali, can you help me with this? Will that be okay? You might want to leave the key for the gentleman to the dodgy looking guy over there. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> come on up, Ali. Everyone give Ali a big piece of So, Ali, come right there. We're going to do something with the new cube. We're going to get to her cube in a bit. We're going to do something with this cube right now. I should also point out that as well as this cube, I have a cube for you as well. That one's mine. This one's yours. This one is a training cube. It's very easy. Um, before you use this one, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to mix it up. Now, guys, there are six sides to a Rubik's Cube, and there's a different colour on each side. The more you mix one of these things up, the more difficult it is to solve. It's actually 47 quintillion million combinations with the Rubik's Cube, which is ridiculous when you think about it. I'm not going to solve this, I'm just going to put it right there, and I would like you to mix this one up. Now, this one is basically a toy, one in five times, and I give this to someone to mix, they break it. Please don't break it. You can go in any direction, but if you feel like you're forcing it, line the sides up first. If you do try and force it, it will break. If you mix it too fast, it will break. If you break it, it's going to be embarrassing for everyone, but mainly me, because this is my job. So, what I want you to do is mix it up as much as you want to. Ali, uh, you can go in any direction, as long as you realise that when you finish mixing it, I'm going to ask you to put it back in the original order. I'm joking, Ali. <laughs> she wasn't really phased by that. Which is quite uh, Ali, the longer it takes you to do this, the more difficult it is for me to do what I'm about to do. And I've got a feeling you don't like it very much. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Guys, my job is to do the impossible. What you're about to see right now is completely impossible. And let me explain why. You mix this up. Before you mix this up, I mix this one up. I think it's pretty impressive that these two sides right here match exactly. I know, I love the look on your face, so you look like a rabbit horse in headlights. That side number one matches exactly. Side number two matches exactly. Side number three matches exactly. Side number four matches exactly. And if I get these last two sides, I know you're going to go crazy. The one on the top is side number five, and guys, the one on the bottom is side number six. That's all six sides. Thank you very much. <laughs> now look identical. If I told you six months ago I knew exactly how these cubes would look, would you believe me? Yeah. So if I can prove to you categorically without a shadow of a doubt, I knew exactly what this cube would look like six months ago, would that be good enough to get a big round of applause? Yeah. Well genuinely I didn't know exactly how this cube would end up mixed six months ago. You don't believe me, do you, Alex? Yeah, to prove it to you, <laughs> six months ago I've got myself a tattoo right there on my arm, and you can probably see that that tattoo predicts exactly how that cube would be mixed. I'm hoping you guys are just stunned into silence. Yeah. This yes. is where we're at right now. Now, I know, I know why you're not going crazy. The reason is, you're, not, you're waiting for the moment that everybody waits for. You're waiting for me to solve the Rubik's Cube. Now, the world champion can solve one of these in 7.8 seconds using two hands. I'm going to solve this in one second with one hand. If I can solve this in one second with one hand, the deal is you've got to go crazy, is that okay? Yeah. Now you're going to be timekeeper, you're going to say go, you don't need a clock or a watch, as long as you can count to one, we're kind of good, okay? <laughs> so, all, all you have to do is say go, one second later I'm going to solve it, everybody watch the cube, when you say go. Okay. Go. That's a second, right? Is that a second? <laughs> Trick. I'm going to do it one more time. Can you do me a favour? There's six colours on a Rubik's Cube, so name a colour. Red. Uh, Red. Okay, no problem. Here's the thing. I'm going to do this one more time, but I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to go very slowly. So you can see the whole thing happening. Now, the one thing you need to understand about a Rubik's Cube is the centre points never, never mix. The centre points always stay the same. So, for example, if I wanted to solve the orange side, it would have to be around the orange centre. Does that make sense? This could not be the orange side, that would have to be the yellow side. What was the colour you said, sir? Red. Red. 
So that's the red side. That has to be the red side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you all see that, that, that side down? I just want you to focus on this side. I'll stand up. If I hold it up here, can you see it? Watch that cube. If I shake it in slow motion <coughs> in one hand, that cube will start solving that red side in slow motion. And as that red side starts to solve, I snap my fingers every other side of that cube. <laughs> The only way I can get better than this, and the only way I can improve on what's happening, is if I don't solve the cube. But instead I get somebody else to solve the cube, somebody who's never solved the cube before. Somebody like Ali. You don't know how to solve the cube, do you? So, well do me a favor, stand right there, face the front, smile, you're in show business, but people remember this moment forever. It's already mixed up, I'm going to put it behind my back. Tell me if you can see the cube there, Ali. When I put this behind your back, I'd like you to copy what I'm doing and just turn the cube like that. Can you do that for yeah. me? Yeah. That is literally all I want you to do. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Now don't drop it on the floor because that will break it. We don't want to do that. And it's already mixed up, so Ali can only make it for us. So put your hands behind your back. You should be able to feel it as it comes down into your hand. And you're turning it right up. That's perfect. Now, I'm not going to touch you or, or, or go anywhere near you. I want to keep turning it. And whenever you're happy, stop and keep it behind your back. And tell everyone that you've stopped. Now, this is the moment that people are going to remember forever. This is the moment that people are going to come back to you and tell you to remember this moment. I'm going to snap my fingers, and when I do, you're going to bring the cube out in front of you. The cube that's been mixed up and you've been turning behind your back. And if that's solved, every single person here is going to give a big round of applause to you. You don't believe it? Oh, good. You believe it. Because the only way this is going to work is if you do believe. So I want to hear it from the soul. Do you believe? <laughs> Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that we gave Ali? Do you remember we gave Sarah a mixed up cue? Just, just before you go, yeah. just take yeah. a second. Do you remember we gave Sarah a mixed up cue? Yeah. And you've been holding that in the bag? And you've been holding that the whole time? You've done an amazing job. Let's give Sarah a big round of applause. Come on, it's too big time. You hold on to that, I don't want to touch it. Don't open it, please. <laughs> Here's the thing, the big finish. See, every trick needs a big finish, and this is the big finish to this trick. You see, you've been holding that mixed up cube. If I told you I could solve that cube that I haven't even touched that Sarah's been holding the whole time, would that be good? Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Because I've kind of technically already done that. I never touched the cube that was behind your back, and that's solved. So I have to go further from a theatrical point of view, this thing has to build. So I'm going to snap my fingers, and when I do snap my fingers, Every single little bit of colour in that bag, uh, not the bag, sorry, the cube, every single bit of colour on that cube in that bag is going to vanish. The red, the green, the blue, the yellow, the orange, the white, even the black under the stickers. It happens when I snap my fingers. And the only way we're going to know this has worked or not is by the look on her face when she looks in that bag. Have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a big finish. You will not find a clear cube anywhere for helping me, Ali. I want to say thank you very much, and I'd like to give you a gift. Here you go, you can have the bag. There you go. <laughs> So that's great. That's a great way to do a uh, to do a cube matching effect. You can get that from Ruby Extreme, and you also get the big cube. And the nice thing about it is because of the structure of the routine, when you've uh, when you've actually finished, again, you're you know you're you're very close to solving that cube. So you can then go into a cube solve and whatever else that you want to do. Um, Venom Cube then came out next. Venom Cube is fantastic. It's very clever. It's uh, it's I, I don't want to get into the method right now, but it is a very clever way of solving the cube. Um, it really is, it's, uh, it's genius. I don't wanna to give too much away about it. Um, suffice to say, it's very heavily gimmicked and it's absolutely worth the price. But what it allows you to do is have one cube down on the table, have another cube mixed up, and then you take the cubes and you can immediately show that they match. I mean, it's that clean, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, then, just so you know, on a side note to that, a lot of people don't know about this, but, um, uh, John Allen bought out something called a cube tube, which is a what looks like a plinth with a cover on it. And it's great because it allows you um, to put a cube onto this plinth 
um, that's, you know, that can be shown and examined and you put the cube onto this plinth and in the action of taking the plinth, uh, taking the cover off in order to take the cube back, you, it, it loads the gimmicks for Venom Cube onto the actual cube, which is very clever. So if you do Venom Cube or you do any sort of cube matching effect that involves a shell or involves gimmicks and you want to load the cube in full view of the audience, John Allen's Cube Tube is absolutely brilliant. I'm telling you right now, it's so good. Um, so that's that's something worth looking into. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any other ways of doing the cube matching effect. Yeah, I mean, there's millions of ways. I can sit here for hours talking to you about it. Uh, I mean, the main ways that it's done is with, uh, is with uh, shells or with gimmicks. As I say, the Venom Cube and Rubicon are the two most popular. Um, but you've also got... Um, um, Rubik's 360, sorry, not Rubik's 360, Rubik's Dream, and you've also got ways of actually doing it, like the timing force that I showed you earlier on. Um, cube effects by Carl Hine, he's got a great cube matching effect, um, but doesn't use shells or gimmicks or anything like that, and it involves paper bags, so it involves having a couple of cubes in a bag, uh, and the structure of the routine is that you take a cube out, um, and you put it back into the bag, you have it mixed, that's it. The spectator mixes the cube and uh, and you put it back in the bag and you say, would it be good if I could solve it? And they say, yes. And you tip it out and it's solved. And then you say, well, I was cheating. I've got another cube in there. And you take the other cube out. Very funny sequence to open up a cube act. But now you're in a situation where the spectator solved that cube and then you can come into this and mix it up and the two cubes will match. So that's a very nice sequence. You can check that out. If you don't want to buy expensive gimmicks, you don't have to. You can get Cube Effects by Carl Hine, and that goes into that method right there. Um, so that's really cool. That's worth looking at. Um, I want to talk to you about Rubik's 360, because we've talked about Rubik's, uh, we talked about Rubik's Dream. Henry then brought out Rubik's Dream 360. And a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Rubik's Dream 360 and Rubik's Dream? <laughs> well, I'm going to play you a video right now of um, what you can do with Rubik's Dream 360. This is a video of Ryland performing on stage a couple of years ago. Uh, I think he was about six at this point. This is him performing on stage, doing some cube magic, and um, he uses Rubik's 360 in this. So you'll see exactly what it's capable of, if that makes sense. So let me, let me just play this video for you very, very quickly. And then we'll we'll quickly talk about what 360 is. Now, for those of you that don't know Ireland, it's Craig and Sarah's son. And the whole reason that all of this has happened, and all of the fundraising that they've done with Birmingham Children's Hospital, and all the amazing work that they've done, is because of this little boy. Because a few years ago, he went to mommy and daddy when he had some friends that were being treated in the hospital and said, Mom, Dad, I want to help my friends. Okay, is there anything that we can do? We have skills. Is there anything that we can do? So that spawned all of this. And they've been helping them for years and helping his friends and helping other children to get better, which is amazing, don't you think? Yeah. Now, Roland's going to come out and do some magic. Now, this guy's been doing magic since he was three, which seems like a really long time, but now he's still only seven. And he's doing magic that a lot of touring professional magicians would be proud of. So not only is this little boy got a heart of gold, he's actually a very, very talented young man, and you're about to see it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's raise the roof. Roland! I've got a bag, and I've got a picture of a Rubik's Cube in it. A mixed up one. I'm going to solve that cube in five seconds. I'm going to count to three. You're going to count to five. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. You may think that's cheating. But I'm going to do it with a real cube. I'm going to go in the audience and pick a volunteer to mix this cube up. This 
he's back is to let you know I'm not looking at the cube while solving. On on the count of three, you're gonna count to five. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> To be honest, I cheated. <laughs> Did you know there was another cube in the bag? <laughs> this is the cube you mixed up, sir. <laughs> but now it's time for the real magic. I'm going to solve. I'm going to mix up my cube. Both cubes are going to match. Sign number one matches. <laughs> Sign number two matches. Sign number three matches. this cube. I'm not just going to solve it, I'm going to solve it behind my back. <laughs> five seconds, maybe less. On the count of three, you're going to count to five. Three, two, one, go. Five, two, just forget it. <laughs> I was doing behind my back. Yeah. I was solving the cube in one second. The more hard, the more you mix up a Rubik's cube, the more harder it is to solve. I'm going to solve this cube in one second. So this uh, is what Ryland used in the show. This is Rubik's 360. It's basically a shell that encompasses the whole of the cube. Normally Rubik's shells, they only encompass five of the six sides. This encompasses the whole cube. And it also allows you to mix the cube. Even though this is a shell, it allows you to mix the cube, which is a really nice subtlety if you're doing the sort of thing Ryland was doing where, you know, you're doing cube matches and then, you know, you can give it a mix. It looks very deceptive. And that's the thing about this. There's so much you can do with it. Uh, with the Rubik's 360, there is so much you can do with it. So Ryland used it in that context to do a cube matching effect, which is which is crazy good. It's crazy good. But you, you can do it for other stuff as well. So a lot of the time when I'm opening my cube acts, um, I'll use a 360 to do uh, a routine where the stickers go onto the cube. In fact, let me let me uh, quickly show you a performance of that. Let me let me roll your performance of how I use this to open up my my cube bag. Let's have a look at that. And I've got Sarah behind the camera. Hey, Sarah. Hey. So do you know what I've got inside this bag? Mm, I'm gonna guess I've, the Rubik's cube. I've just been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually got more than just a Rubik's cube though. I have stickers. Because do you know that statistically, most people that say they can solve a Rubik's cube, what they actually do is they just peel the stickers off. Uh, and a Rubik's Cube nice. has six sides and the six colours, one on each side. Now, what I also have here is a cube that hasn't had any stickers stuck on it. Now, when you're sticking stickers on a Rubik's Cube, you've got to be very, very, very specific because else it doesn't look very good. So let me ask you a question. If I gave you this cube, uh, which you can solve, actually, this is very easy to solve. And I gave you the stickers and I told you to put all the stickers on the cube. How long do you reckon it would take you? Mm, I don't know. Take a while. A little while. Yeah, Take a quite a minutes, while. Take yeah. a few minutes. Well, look, I'm going to pop the cube right here inside the bag, and I'm going to try and do this in record time, okay? Okay. So it goes right there inside the bag. There we go. Record time. I want to watch the stickers. I'm going to do it in less than three seconds. Are you ready? Okay. Watch the stickers. Here we go. One, two, 
three and check that out now i don't know if these guys can see that on the camera but these the stickers have gone you can actually see where they were and the stickers have actually gone they are no longer there this sticker has disappeared this sticker has disappeared all the stickers have gone which leaves the question where have the stickers gone well you're not going to believe this but now inside the bag right there on the cube we have the stickers okay. there's the bag there's the cube and now we can get on with our favorite routine so, so i love that as an opener and i think the problem with rubik's cube magic is getting away from solving cubes and cube solves and um cube matches there's nothing wrong with matching two cubes there's nothing wrong with solving the cube there's nothing wrong with any of that but i think it's really nice when you can do something else with the cube as well and this is the perfect example of that um, because that is a routine where you bring out this cube that's got no stickers on it. And it's a really funny moment because you know, laymen, if you start doing cube magic, they're going to turn around to you and say, oh, you know, I used to be able to solve a cube. I pulled the stickers off. Uh, that's what people think. That's a joke that laymen make all the time. So you bring out this cube and it's got no stickers on it. And you say, well, you know, did it look something like that? And then you take the cube and you put it in the bag and you show the stickers, you shake, the stickers disappear, and then you reach in the bag and the, the, the stickers are on the cube. Killer moment, absolutely killer moment. And you end up with, with this. This is actually the cube that I used in that performance. You end up with this. Um, and you can either, um, there's a couple of different, if you're doing this mix and mingle, and you can do this mix and mingle, um, you go into your pockets to grab another prop and then you come out and you, um, you, you switch the cube. Or how I like to do it a lot of the time is I'll do this in a stage show or in a parlor show and I'll have my table to one side. I'll do this to open. And then as I go into the case to get something else, um, I'll switch the cube. Either way, the cube is switched out. This is away and I'm into the next phase of my routine. Um, so the Rubik's 360 is great. It's got some really wonderful routines on that you can do. You can do cube solves, you can do cube um, matchups, you can do stuff like stickers jumping onto the cube. There's a lot you can do. I recommend Rubik's 360 and Rubik's Dream. Very quickly, we'll talk about a couple of other gimmicks. Um, just because people ask me, I'm trying to think of all the questions that get asked about Rubik's Cubes. And one of the questions that get asked, should I use gimmicks? Should I not use gimmicks? Here's the thing, I use both. I think some of the gimmicks that you can get are brilliant. They absolutely enhance the cube act. There is no cleaner way of doing a cube matching effect than Venom Cube and Rubik's, uh, Rubicon. They are absolutely brilliant. There's no way you could do something like that sticker trick that I showed you earlier on without something like Rubik's 360. If you're doing mix and mingle and you wanna have a mini cube with you to be able to do a really clean matchup effect, then absolutely there's no better way of doing it. So gimmicks are great, but you don't have to use gimmicks. A lot of the time when I'm doing mix and mingle, so not when I'm doing table magic, because a lot of the time when I'm doing table magic, I'll walk over to the table with a little red bag with a couple of cubes and I'll put it down and then I either decide to go into that routine or not. But with, when I'm doing mix and mingle, I'll just have a regular cube in my pocket and I can do as long or as short as I want to. So I can do a really short routine where I just take it and solve it, or I can do it a little bit longer where I'm gonna match the cube on the tattoo and then solve it, or I can go into really long versions. You know, I can, I can go whatever direction I want to go with with that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think the gimmicks are absolutely well worth getting as long as you get the money for them. Rubik's Cube gimmicks are not cheap. Um, so let's quickly just go through some Rubik's Cube gimmicks that are worth getting. Instacube is great. So if you don't know what Instacube is, Henry Harry has put that out a little while ago. And what Instacube is, is it's a way of doing a solve very, very quickly. So you uh, you take a cube and um, you solve it. That, that's basically what you do. You take a cube and you solve it. And, and what's nice about this is the cube is regular. It's gimmicked, but it operates as a regular cube. Um, and there's a gimmick that attaches to it that allows you to do the insta uh, the rd insta routine and then once you've done it you can palm that gimmick off it takes up literally no space in your hand and then you can put the cube down and you can go to something else and ditch this in your pocket so you're left with a regular cube so that's nice the disadvantage not disadvantage but the thing about the insta cube is you don't really need it uh you know i mean there's so many really visual uh cube uh, solve. So this one, for example, which is my favorite cube solve, where you show it and, and it's apparently mixed and you come up like this 
and now you're in a situation where only two moves away from being sold but it looks really well mixed so now you can take those two souls out and it looks incredible I, you know i don't think anybody's going to look at rd Insta and go well that was too much difference to that if you know what i mean so if you've got a limited budget go for a different cube route a, a different cube gimmick instead of that it's nice and trust me if you buy it you'll you'll think it's very clever and you'll do it and i've got two of them but i tend not to use it if that makes sense or well, one of the nice things by the way about rd insta is you can actually combine it with venom cube so if you're doing venom cube and you're going to use a gimmick cube anyway you can have that on the venom cube to do the first phase of the routine and then you can go into venom cube uh, which is nice. By the way, I do have people asking me about Venom Cube an awful lot and what is Venom Cube. Uh, what I'll do is I'll play you the footage of when Ryland reviewed it in the review show because Ryland reviewed this in the review show a little while ago with me and he performed Venom Cube. So the easiest way for you guys to see that, uh, to see what Venom Cube is, is if I roll that performance. So let me show you that right now. I've got two cubes. I'm going to try and create something impossible with this one. And, but first, I need to give it a mix-up, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now, you know that cubes take a long time to mix, solve, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and solve it in one move, just like this. Whoa, that's incredible. Yeah, and you can examine it and you can mix it up. You want to mix it up? Yeah. Okay, right, fair enough. Um, da, 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 yep, mixed. Cool, I'm happy. Mixed? Yep. Okay. Now, we're going to use this cube as well now. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, you won't believe this, but look, sign number one, matches. Yeah. Sign number two, matches. <laughs> sign number three, matches. Sign number four. Matches. Sign number five. Matches. Sign number six. All six sides. Thank you very much. So that was a performance of Ryland doing RD Insta and Venom Cube. He combined the two routines together. And as I say, that's the nice thing about that. You can combine RD Insta and Venom Cube into one routine. So if you're performing on stage and you're going to have a gimmick cube anyway, because you know you're going you know to go into Venom Cube, why not? You know what I mean? Uh, Gentleman's Magic brought out a routine a little while ago called Rub. Ru I can't remember what it was called. It was like Rub. Rub. It was a big thing at Blackpool a couple of years ago. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It'll be on the screen. Uh, it's Gentleman's Magic Project, and the whole idea of it is you give the spectator the cube to solve. They mix up the cube and solve it, and then you bring out your phone and you show the last picture taken on your phone was a picture of the Rubik's Cube. Or you can direct them to your website and you can say that on your website is a picture. Or you can even link it up to a 3D, uh, to a printer, a little pocket printer, and you can print, print it off in your pocket. That's nice and it's clever and I had one. There were two disadvantages with that, to be honest. The first disadvantage for me is that it feels a bit odd because they're using like a Geiger Cube, um, because obviously the cube links up to the... Um, uh, links up to the phone and they've tried to make it look as much like a normal cube as possible but anybody who knows cube magic would know that there's something like off about that cube and the other thing is the spectator is actually mixing it so you can't a you can't do and use any of the gimmicks with the with the cube because it's a special cube so shells and stuff won't work with it um, but secondly it ends up mixed so you're gonna have to reset that cube before the next table if you want to do it again um, well, you don't have to, I suppose. You can give it to them and get them to mix it up. But if you want to do more than just a cube solve, so if you want to kind of do more than just, not cube solve, sorry. If you want to do more than just the routine of here, I mix it up, look, there's a picture on my phone. If you want to kind of build that into a longer routine, you can't because the cube's in a permanent state of being mixed up. So the only way to deal with that is to solve it between each table, do whatever you want to do with it, and then go into this as a finale. So, and, and also... I find it's more impressive having a tattoo prediction, even though they're not mixing it and I am, having that thing where I'm saying, look, I'm gonna mix this up anytime you want to, as I mix this up anytime you want to say stop, they say stop and, and, and it matches. For me, that's a better trick, that people are more impressed with this as a tattoo 
than they are with a picture on my phone. I always felt that when I did it on my phone, it felt a little bit overwhelming. And as I said, the thing with this is I can now go into any cube style routine as I want to because I'm in a situation where I can solve the cube. So although it was good, I wouldn't recommend it, um, but it's well worth talking about. Um, let's uh, Cube Cards by Kev G. That's something that you absolutely should get. It's not gimmicked. However, you do get a gimmicked pack of cards uh, or you get a special pack of cards. So you, with the routine, you get these cards that are designed to look like tournament cards um, that you might get. They've all got pictures of Rubik's Cubes on them. And there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with this. But the basic concept is somebody, uh, you know, you mix up a cube. Somebody picks one of these cards and it matches. And then you solve the cube and all of the cards solve as well. So it's a bit like combining wild card with Rubik's Cube magic. And this, this came out very early on. Uh, very early on this came out. And uh, it's a great routine. It really is. I see a lot of working pros doing it. And I saw a lot of people doing this that don't do any of the Rubik's Cube magic. So uh, it's well worth checking out. And it's so old, it's new, if you know what I mean. It's, it's been around for so long, a lot of people don't even know about it, aren't aware about it. Uh, but Cube Cards by Kev G is absolutely fantastic. And talking of Kev G, um, he's got something called the Refractor Project, um, which you can buy directly. This is only available directly from him. And uh, I will be doing a review show special on this at some point soon. Um, but what this is, is this is a website that's been created and designed, and it's specifically about Rubik's Cube magic. That's what it's about. It's about Rubik's Cube magic with a regular cube. And he's developed a whole bunch of new concepts and new algorithms and new ideas um, that basically takes Rubik's Cubes to an entirely new level. Now, I did a Talk Magic interview with him a little while ago, and he demonstrated on the interview a couple of the things that you can do with the sequences that he's put together in the refract Refractor Project. So for sake of completeness, I'm going to run that for you now, just so you can see that footage. So let me run that footage for you. Um, this is all available directly from his website. Let's have a quick look at that. Hey Craig, so this is uh, my routine Decepticon that I'll uh, share with you. So you see that I've got a mixed up cube. And now are you familiar with all the different colours on a Rubik's Cube? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cube behind my back. What I'd like you to do is just to name out loud any colour you like. Hmm. White. White. Any reason why you chose the colour white? I think it was you talking about weddings. It just, I think you psychologically influenced me. I'm not too sure. Now, have, have you ever seen anybody do the Rubik's Cube behind their back? No. No? Okay, well, check this out, look. You said white, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That look. Can you see there's three white bits all in a row? Wow. You don't look that impressed, but it's the only place on the cube where there's three of the same colour all next to each other. But look, you see actually white, your colours, so there's some white here, there's some white here, there's some white here, and there's some white here, right? Yeah. Now, it'd be cool because I can do magic. It'd be cool if I could do something magical and like take my hand and like give the cube a swipe and it'd, it'd all change white. That'd be cool, right? That'd be great. All right, okay, so look, what we'll do is we'll... <laughs> did, you, did you miss that all right so look oh, i know that was quick so let me let me let me show you this again so if you can just name another color on the cube uh blue blue any reason for blue uh ryland's favorite color okay that's cool actually did you know blue is actually the most popular color in the world no yeah it is and it's used on like over 70 percent of companies like logos and stuff i didn't know that no uh so i think i think i am there if i can hold this up uh i see two blue there you, you, you did say blue though right <laughs> yes i did yeah, okay cool all right so look i'm going to show you this one more time and you can see exactly what's happening so uh, if you can just name uh, any other colour. Okay, green. Let's go green. Green. Okay, perfect. Look, the cubes are going to go behind my back. I'm going to give this a mix up. And no, I'm not, 
Right, I, if you're thinking I've got another cube, I'm switching it behind my back. I'm not. So just so you can see, I've not got, I've not got another cube. But you said, uh, you said the colour green, yeah? Yeah. Can you see uh, on the cube actually here, we've got two green pieces? Yes. So look, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to take my hand. My hand is going to cover the cube and my hand is going to squeeze the cube like this. And when I squeeze the cube, can you see that the first row completely solves? Yes. Let, let me show you this again, okay? Now I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to squeeze the cube, and when I squeeze the cube, that is when the second layer solves. <laughs> the third time, third time, I'm going to squeeze the cube like this, and that is when the whole face of the colour that you named green is solved. But look, Craig, I didn't just solve one face of the cube, I solved all faces of the cube. Wow. So yeah, that's that's that routine. So Craig, do you do you know how to solve the cube? Yes, yes I do. You do. Okay, cool. Have you ever heard of this thing called God's number? Yes, twenty. Yeah, twenty. So this is this is basically it took thirty five CPU years and some scientists to work out that the the Rubik's cube, even though there's forty three quintillion possible combinations, that any cube can be solved in twenty moves or less, which is which is pretty crazy. Uh, so let me let me demonstrate something for you. Uh, what I'd like you to do is to uh, name any colour on the Rubik's Cube. Uh, red. Red. This colour, yeah? Yeah. Cool. So look, I'm going to put the cube in my uh, palm with the red facing up. Now that was a conscious choice, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm just going to want you to say stop whenever you want. And I'm going to just turn the cube like this. Stop. There on yellow. So the first colour you chose was red, the second colour you chose was yellow, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know if you've seen any of those Rubik's Cube competitions, but the cube has to be mixed up in such a way that it's not just like easy to solve, yeah? So uh, let me uh, try this. The first, what was the first colour you chose? It was red. Red, okay. So, um, Red. <laughs> All right, pretty cool, right? Now, what I was actually using was this technique called cognitive mapping. And this is something cubers use, where, whereby I'm actually tracking where the colours of the cubelets are so I can use the most efficient way possible to get to a solved side. So let me uh, show you this again. So the, the other colour you chose was yellow, yeah? Yeah. So looking at the cube, I can get to yellow in 14 moves. <laughs> All right, look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 moves gets me to your colour, yellow. <laughs> now, have you heard of something called cognitive illusion? No. So this is where your brain tricks you into thinking you've seen something when you've seen something else. So look, this is, this is something like this. <laughs> yeah, look, I know that was really I know that was really quick, so let me just show you this again. So if I've got a mixed cube, right? And this looks mixed, right? But this is just your brain tricking you because look, if I just give it a quick little wave, you'll actually see in fact it is a solved cube. And that is my routine colour. Uh what is no what it is called um Cognitive illusion, that was it. Lost track. Wow, that, is, yeah. that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So, I mean, that's fantastic. The stuff that Kev is putting together on this project is incredible. It really is. And, and you just need a regular cube. And talking about doing stuff with just a regular cube, there's lots of stuff that's come out recently that you can do with a regular cube. Uh, books that I'm going to be reviewing at some point in the future. Dark Side of the Cube um, and, and the follow-up book, great stuff. Henry Harrius has just brought out a um, a booklet on moves with a Rubik's Cube that allows you to do stuff with a regular Rubik's Cube. Haven't seen it yet, but I will be getting that because that sounds incredible. Um, so there's a bunch of different stuff you can do. Um, so let's, uh, are there any other, are there any other gimmicks I want to talk about? I mean, there's millions of them. I'm going to miss some if I talk about, you know, I, 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 there's new Rubik's Cube things coming out all of the time. There really is. I can talk about what 
I think is good. Um, the cubed chocolate thing, again, that brought out by Henry Harrius was uh, a cube that turns into chocolate. That was a really nice gimmick. Uh, and what was really nice about it is it comes in a little box that makes it practical. Because up until this point, it wasn't very practical. But you can have this little box, open up the box, there's a cube in there, and do this, and it explodes into a whole bunch of chocolate. Very nice, perfect for social media. Kind of works for mix and mingle, but you've got chocolate all over the place. So that's something you need to bear in mind you need to take into consideration but right time right place that's good and it was also built to work with the shell the mini shell that you get with rubik's dream which is a really nice idea um there's loads of gimmicks that you can buy there's stuff coming out all the time um i think my advice would be when it comes to rubik's gimmicks is to check the reviews because some are great some are not so great um, it depends on what you're looking to do with your cube magic, if that makes sense. I want to talk about two more things now. I want to talk about the first thing I want to talk about is finales. Okay, so we kind of really need to talk about ending a cube act, right? How do you end it? Now, you know, I've seen people end it on, um, on, on Venom Cube, and that's great. It's a great way to end it. You can do it if you want to. No reason why you couldn't end it on Venom Cube. Uh, there's a few different ways that I think are really cool to end a Rubik's Cube routine. The first thing that I'd recommend, and if anybody follows me on Instagram, you know I've been banging on about this for ages, is Cube and Bottle. I think Cube and Bottle is amazing. Giving people that memento that they get to keep to get forever with that cube in that bottle is a beautiful moment. I love, I absolutely love Cube and Bottle. So this is Henry's latest product. Uh, or one of Henry's latest products. You can get uh, it directly from him and the refills have been priced to make it affordable. So that, uh, you know, I, I picked up like 50 or 60 of these cubes. I'm gonna be putting another order in soon. Um, Rubik's Cube, uh, Rub Cubing Bottle is great. It is for me, one of the best ways that you can end a cube act. The negative with it is you can't give it out all the time. You don't want to do, if you're at a gig and it's not really a particular special occasion, let's say you're just doing a restaurant, you don't want to be giving out cube in bottles 10 times in the, in the night, you know, you're just going to end up paying a fortune for that. So uh, another way that I love to end my cube act and probably my favorite way outside of cube in bottle is uh, Clear Cube by Prop Dog. Now, Clear Cube by Prop Dog is absolutely amazing. It's basically an Omni Cube and it looks so good. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually use this Omni Cube. <coughs> Dave Bonsler has come up with this really nice shell that covers one side so you can actually show it like this and throw it up in the air and have it change. And that looks great. And there's no problem with that at all. I tend not to use this. How I tend to use it is with a uh, a kind of a, a, a thing that um, uh, Takemis Asui um, published and he talked about this on his penguin lecture if you want to kind of look into this in more detail which was the concept of using a bag so and you saw it when you saw the cube and bottle routine I didn't actually use the cube gimmick for the cube and bottle routine I actually used Takemiz's uh, concept with a bag for that so I actually ditched the gimmick and I just used Takemiz's routine sometimes I use the gimmick sometimes I don't in that situation I had no table in front of me it wasn't a formal show so I didn't want it and, and I was completely surrounded so I didn't want to use the gimmick so Takamiz put this on his Penguin Live. So he actually put this on his Penguin Live and it's the concept of having two cubes in a bag. You've got a regular cube, you've got a mixed up cube. Apparently you take out the regular cube, you show it. You take out the mixed up cube, you show it. You ask them to name one, you take it out. And, uh, and then the other one that's left inside the bag, you do something incredible with it. Takamiz talks about squashing the cube flat or changing the shape of it or something. I use it for clear cube and I don't do it straight away. I give that cube out to somebody else to hold on to for them, for me. And they can feel it in there. It's a, it's a regular Rubik's Cube. I do whatever routine I want to do. And then at the end, I reach in and I pull out the, cube, the clear cube. And I finish by taking the clear cube out, which is an incredible moment. It really is. Because they just don't expect it. A lot of the time, when I call back to the bag, they've forgotten about the bag. And I say, look, if I could solve that cube that was left in there, would that be good? And they go, yeah, and you go, yeah, but I've already done that five times. Let me see if I can go further. And then you saw, and then you turn it into a clear cube while the spectator's been holding onto it the whole time. It's a great way to end a cube act. Another great way to end a cube act is with the Rubik's Wall, which we've talked about on this channel before numerous times. Ryland actually performs this in his show. He closes his show with the Rubik's Cube, with the Rubik's Wall. It's by Bon Lee. It's a great way to really kind of make a cube act look bigger. 
um, and uh, it's, it's killer. It really is. It's absolutely killer. Um, in fact, in a second, I'll just roll some footage of Ryland doing this in a virtual show, just so you can see. I've put the footage on the channel before, uh, but it might help, so I'll, I'll, I'll roll that footage again. Um, and then other than that, the only other thing that I would suggest is Heim Goldberg's um, a cubism. Now, I can't perform that for you or show you any footage because as part of the deal of buying this, you're not allowed to uh, talk about it. You know, you're not allowed to perform it on video in any way, shape or form. So I can't actually perform it for you. Uh, what I can tell you is you have four regular cubes and with those four regular cubes, you do like a cube wall style routine but the routining behind this is beautiful. So you bring out a cube and you say, if I could solve this one cube, would that be good? And they say, yeah. And you say, but what about four cubes? You bring out four cubes, you blindfold yourself. They're counting down. And when they're counting down, you're trying to solve the cubes. There's a magician in trouble. And then you stack them up and you've got a fantastic ending. It's a download. It's $100. It's not cheap, but it's a great way to end a cube act. And you know what? It's really practical. Like it's super practical. You can do it anytime, anywhere. There's no gimmicks involved in it. It's really cool clever. So those are the four ways that I actually close my cube act, which is cubism, cubing bottle, the Rubik's wall, and, uh, and, and clear cube. Let's have a quick look at the Rubik's wall. This. Now my dad tells me at every show I need a big finale. So I'm just going to get this. Okay, we've got like reading because I like reading in the night. We've got cake, I like eating cake. Marvel, I like superheroes. Okay, now all you've got to do is just say stop. Stop before I get to the end. Stop. stop. That's three, two, one. I'll make it slow. Three, two, three. Stop. There. Now I'm just going to look away. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, I, with this Rubik's wall, they're like labeled like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now on the top row, would you like one, two, three, or four? Three. Three, that one. Okay. Second row. One. One. Okay. Now on the third row. Four. Four. Fifth row. Two. Four. I mean. Two. Now on the fifth row. Three. And again. No, three. And on the final row, which one? Four. Four. There. Now, would you like to take out one more cube? Or is that it? That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, with these cubes, you're going to say stop. Whenever you want to, and then choose one, two, three, four, five, or six. Stop. Which number? Four. Four. There. Okay. Say stop whenever you want to. Stop. There. Which number? Two. Two. And the next one, say so stop whenever you want to. Stop. And the number? Three. Three. Okay. Stop. Which number? Two. 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 Oh. 
As in like uh, one. Uh, one? Oh, um, yeah. One, okay. One. Stop. Five or six? Five. 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 Finally, the last one. Stop. Which number? Well, it's only the last one, isn't it? I'm going to put that there. Now, do you have one more choice to pick out one more cube? And if so, you can pick whatever one. Would you like to pick out one more cube? If so, which um, one? The top one in the left corner. That one? Yes. That. Okay. Now, say stop, and then it'll go back. Stop. Okay. Right. Now, you decided which ones to take out. You decided when to stop. You decided where to put them back. Now, the first, for the first time, name what you are thinking of out of all of these different things. Mario. Mario. Do you recognise who this is? Oh. Wow. Well done. Thank you for watching. Continue watching for more magic. Bye. Okay, so the final thing to talk about right now is what type of cube to get. And that, that's an easy one, to be honest. For me, I, I used to use like a Diane Danchi cube, which is a kind of an expensive uh, sort of Japanese cube. And when Ryland's doing speed cubing, he uses kind of really expensive speed cubing cubes as well. But when either myself or Ryland are performing cube magic, we use the RD cubes by Henry Harrius because we both use gimmicks in our cube act in various different ways. And the RD cubes by Henry Harrius are designed to work with every single one of those gimmicks. Uh, and also they're really nice cubes. They're speed cubes. They're not as high quality as some of the 30 or $40 speed cubes, but for magic, they're absolutely fine for what you need. You can pick them up relatively cheaply with stickers or without stickers, and they work with all of the cubes and they all interchange really, really nicely. So I could tell you to get this cube or that cube or the other cube. I would go for an RD regular rd cube from henry harris i really would what i would say to you is do not go with the regular rubik's cube because it is so it fit once you get used to using speed cubes uh using a, a rubik's cube just makes it feel like you're trying to shuffle treacle i mean honestly it's terrible so i would go personally with a henry harris rd cube so there you go guys that is everything i know about uh, Rubik's Cube Magic. In all honesty, it's not. I could spend another two hours talking about this, but I don't want this thing to be too long. I wanted it to be a basic overview of Rubik's Cubes. My goal, my desire here is to get more people into Rubik's Cube Magic. That is what I'd love to do because I think it's super visual. Why wouldn't you want to do Rubik's Cube Magic? It's super visual. Uh, there's so many different things you can do with it. It's practical. It's an instant reset. The magic happens in the spectator's hands. You don't need a table. You can do it in any environment. It plays to a big audience or it plays one on one it is absolutely perfect so now i throw this over to you would you have any other questions about ruby's cube magic if you have let me know in the comments down below and on next week's q a i'll answer them do you want to know about particular products that maybe i haven't mentioned do you want to know about particular routines that i haven't mentioned do you want to know anything else about ruby's cubes that i didn't cover if i didn't i apologize and i would be more than happy to cover anything else that you want me to cover and also don't forget next sunday we're going to be back to the normal q a style video so if you want to have any other questions that you want me to answer any that were asked last week I'm going to get to next week but if you have any other generic questions please ask me down below and I will happy to get to them and once again thank you very much for watching the channel I really appreciate it um, don't forget if you want to see more videos like this like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below I'm going to be back on Monday with three videos at nine o'clock I'm going to have the five by five at two o'clock we're going to have a shorts and at six o'clock we're going to have a magic live thanks very much for watching my name's Craig from Magic TV.